In this presentation, we will explore the two-phase locking protocol. It is a conservative approach to concurrency control in database systems. This method is crucial for maintaining data integrity and consistency when multiple transactions access the same database. Let's understand the two-phase locking protocol. It is a concurrency control protocol that ensures serializability. The protocol divides transaction execution into two distinct phases. It prevents inconsistencies in database operations. The two-phase locking protocol is a fundamental approach in database management system transaction management. Key characteristics of this protocol include guaranteeing conflict serializability, preventing deadlocks with proper implementation, balancing concurrency and consistency, and its common usage in most commercial database systems. The two-phase locking protocol consists of two distinct phases, the growing phase and the shrinking phase. In phase one, the growing phase, a transaction may obtain locks but cannot release any locks. During this phase, all necessary locks are acquired, including read and shared locks, as well as write and exclusive locks. In phase two, the shrinking phase, a transaction may release locks but cannot obtain any new locks. Locks are released as they are no longer needed, and the transaction cannot acquire any new locks, continuing until the transaction completes. In two-phase locking, there are mainly two types of locks, shared locks and exclusive locks. Shared locks, denoted as S, are used for read operations. Multiple transactions can hold shared locks simultaneously, and they do not conflict with other shared locks. Exclusive locks, denoted as X, are used for write operations. Only one transaction can hold an exclusive lock at a time, and it conflicts with both shared and exclusive locks. Here is a lock compatibility matrix. If a transaction has a shared lock, another transaction can also have a shared lock. However, if a transaction has a shared lock, another transaction cannot have an exclusive lock and vice versa. Similarly, two transactions cannot have exclusive locks on the same data. Here is an example of transaction using conservative two-phase locking. Consider two transactions. Transaction T1 and Transaction T2. Transaction T1 begins by acquiring a shared lock on data item A and an exclusive lock on data item B. It then reads data item A, increments its value by 100, and writes the new value to data item B. Finally, it releases the locks on A and B and commits the transaction. Similarly, Transaction T2 begins by acquiring a shared lock on data item B and an exclusive lock on data item C. It then reads data item B, multiplies its value by two, and writes the new value to data item C. Finally, it releases the locks on B and C and commits the transaction. In conservative two-phase locking, all locks are acquired before any operations begin. This approach prevents deadlocks by acquiring all needed locks at the start of the transaction, ensuring that if a lock cannot be obtained, the transaction waits without holding any other locks. Conservative two-phase locking has several advantages. It completely eliminates deadlocks, simplifies deadlock management, ensures serializability of transactions, provides predictable lock acquisition behavior, and is easier to implement and maintain. However, it also has disadvantages, including reduced concurrency compared to basic two-phase locking, requiring knowledge of all data items in advance, longer waiting times for transactions, potential for unnecessary blocking, and lower overall system throughput. Here is a comparison of conservative two-phase locking with other variants such as basic two-phase locking and strict two-phase locking. In conservative two-phase locking, lock acquisition happens all at the beginning, whereas gradual acquisition occurs in basic and strict two-phase locking. Lock release occurs after all operations in conservative two-phase locking but happens any time in the shrinking phase in basic two-phase locking, and only after commit or abort in strict two-phase locking. Deadlock prevention is inherent in conservative two-phase locking, but detection or timeout is needed in basic and strict two-phase locking. Conservative two-phase locking has the lowest concurrency level, basic two-phase locking has the highest, 
and strict two-phase locking has a medium level. Cascading rollbacks are possible in conservative and basic two-phase locking, but are prevented in strict two-phase locking. Note that conservative two-phase locking trades off concurrency for deadlock prevention, making it suitable for systems where deadlock avoidance is more critical than maximizing throughput. Conservative two-phase locking has practical applications in safety-critical database systems, financial transaction processing, systems with predictable access patterns, environments where deadlocks are costly, and database systems with limited resources. Key takeaways from this discussion include that conservative two-phase locking acquires all locks before any operation, eliminates deadlocks completely, trades concurrency for safety, requires knowing all data items in advance, and ensures serializability of transactions. In conclusion, conservative two-phase locking represents a deadlock-free approach to concurrency control, prioritizing safety over performance. While it reduces concurrency, it provides strong consistency guarantees and simplifies transaction management by eliminating deadlock detection and resolution mechanisms. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit codelucky.com for more such useful content.